Hello and welcome to lesson 1.2 in the Python tutorial series. Uh, thank you for everybody who watched the first video and are continuing on with me. Uh, for those of you just joining us, uh, welcome. This series of videos is designed to take beginning programmers and those with little to no programming experience and uh, teach them how to use the Python programming language to become you know, somewhat effective programmer, write small to medium size applications, programs, and games. At the end of the last video, we talked about uh, moving on to Python and variables. Variables is a super important topic when it comes to programming. I don't know if there's a program you'll write that doesn't use variables. They're simple, but it's important to understand how they're used and how they're addressed in Python and some of the syntaxes for them and proper use in programming. There's a million different ways to use variables, but there's some general conventions that are accepted and we want to take a look at those. Um, those conventions make your larger programs much easier to handle. So variables are just stored in memory addresses in the computer and we don't need to go into too much depth about that. But you can think of a memory address in your computer kind of like a house on a street. You could have 50 different houses along a street, and each house has its own unique number. Even though two houses may have the same floor plan, may be painted the same color, they have different things inside them. So each address location is unique. When we create variables in Python, we're simply naming an area, a memory address in computer memory. Right now there's just thousands upon thousands, I and mean, even more than that, uh, bytes of free memory in your computer that aren't being used. When we run these programs, what we're doing is we're taking numbers and we're storing them in a memory location, but the memory locations usually have numbers that represent where they are. So like x112, x113 would be, you know, a couple examples and the, those aren't actual memory addresses, but everything's kind of number based and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So with a variable, all we're doing is taking a memory address and we're assigning it a name that makes sense to us. Um, heading on over to the Python window, if we take a look at it, let's say I have a shoe size of 12. All we're doing is naming part of your computer memory shoe size, and when we want to refer to it, we type in shoe size and Python returns the number 12. We're naming a location of uh, computer memory. You know, it might say uh, my age, Steve age equals 33. We've now assigned a memory location, the number 33, and we've named it Steve age, so we can call it again later. Now Python does all that for us in the background, so there's not a huge call to understand what a memory address is, but it's nice to know. So going back to the lessons that we did last time, we did basic mathematical calculations. One of the most simple geometric principles or formulas is calculating the area of a triangle. The area of a triangle is simply the base times the height divided by 2. Area equals base times height divided by 2. So if I had a triangle with a base of 20 and a height of 12, that would equal 240 inches or meters or whatever we're measuring things in. If we did 20 times 12 divided by Two, we know that a triangle with a base of 20, a height of 12, has an area of 120 square units. But when I look at this, 20 and 12 don't mean a whole lot to me. I don't know what 20 represents. I don't know what 12 represents. They're just numbers. It just so happens that I've declared what they are, but I'm not going to remember that. We can assign those to variables. If I say base equals 20, I've instructed Python to name an area of computer memory base and assign it a value of 20. When I type base in, 
I can see the variable base refers to a value of 20. If I then say height equals 12 and type in height, the variable height refers to a value of 12. And that equal sign is what's called an assignment statement. An assignment statement is always phrased so that the variable equals an expression. In this case, the variable equals a number. Base equals 20. Height equals 12. When I do my mathematical calculations right now, I can do base divided by height, or base times height, excuse me, base times height divided by 2, and that equals 120. That's because base is the equivalent of 20, height is the equivalent of 12, so base times height is the equivalent of writing 20 times 12. It just so happens those two values are stored in variables at this time. What I can do is I can assign the result to a variable as well. I can say that the area of the triangle is equal to the base times the height divided by 2. In this case, Python doesn't return anything. In reality, what it did is it took base times height divided by 2 and assigned it to the variable area. But just like up at the top when we assigned base to equal 20 and height to equal 12, Python doesn't immediately return any information. When we assign a calculation to a variable, it won't immediately return any information. But if I type an area, Python will tell me that area is equal to 120. Remember from last lesson, it's 120.0 because we're using standard division and standard division always returns a float. Now I can take these numbers and I can take base and set it equal to 6 and I can set height equal to 10 and I can say base times height divided by 2 equals 30. By typing base and height and assigning them a new variable I'm essentially erasing the value that's currently stored in memory and replacing it with a new value. 20 and 12 disappear, they're no longer stored in memory, and they're replaced by a base of 6 and a height of 10. This also doesn't impact area. Area still equals 120 because we haven't reassigned it. If I say area equals base times height divided by 2, area has been reassigned a value of 30, and now area represents that new number, 120, is sent away. Very simply put, that's how variables work. As we start writing actual programs, some text adventures, and some other types of games, you'll get a better sense of how variables are used. But in short, this example right here should give you an idea of what variables are. It, it just it should be noted that I think this is the most important concept in variables. If I set a variable and I say, you know, Coke Zero, I drink a lot of Coke Zero. Let's say I had six Coke Zeros today. Coke Zeros equal to the value of six. Writing Coke Zero is the exact same as just typing in six. When I type in six, Python returns and says, oh, that's, that's worth six. It's a value of six. Coke Zero also has a value of six. So in this case, Coke Zero is equal to writing six. And when it comes to variables, there's a couple rules that you have to keep in mind. Legal Python variable names have to start with either a letter or an underscore. So I could have a variable, as you've seen here, base, area, Coke Zero, shoe size, Steve age. They all start with letters. I could start that with an underscore and say underscore television channel and set that equal to 278. Now if I type in television channel again, I can see that's a perfectly legitimate variable. It's equal to 278, so it's perfectly okay to start everything, your not everything, but your variables with an underscore or 
a letter. Now what I can do is start my variables with a number. Let's say I wanted to say the variable fourth quarter equals four. That's going to return a syntax error because I started with a number. Numbers are perfectly okay to have in your variables. For example, quarter four equals four is perfectly okay. When I type quarter underscore four, I can see that points to a value of four, but fourth quarter gives me a syntax error and that's because it starts with a number. I also can't use any character other than the, the letters, numbers, or underscore. So I might want to say my variable is equal to email at domain equals 78. That's going to give me a syntax error as well, and you can see the at symbol is highlighted in red, telling me that's where my problem is. I can't use that as part of any variable. If I say Coke, whoops, I go Coke percent zero equals six. I'm going to get a syntax error, can't assign it to operator. That's because Python is interpreting that percent sign as the mod sign that we talked about earlier. Uh, in lesson 1.1 can't be used as part of a variable. So letters, numbers, and underscores only, and it has to start with either a letter or the underscore. In addition to that, the case is super important. If I wanted to say the number of hours in a day, and say there's 24, that's okay. If I then type in hours and have the H capitalized, I'm going to get a name error. It says hours and day is not defined. That's because when I defined my variable, hours and day, I used a lowercase h. Variables are case sensitive, so if you use capitals, you'll have to capitalize them the same way. If I set hours in day equal to 28, hours in day equals 24, hours in day with the capital H is equal to 28, and those two are not equal to one another. They're completely different variables, they're stored in different memory addresses, they're considered to have different names, so naming your variables is very important. Now the two most common naming conventions you'll see in Python pothole case and camel case. Uh, I, in all of my examples, use pothole case and that tends to be what I use most often and that's just separating your variables with underscores in lieu of a space. Now you can see it up there with hours in day, coke zero, where I would normally put a space I simply put in an underscore. So here is a space that's an example of pothole case. Now some programmers prefer to use camel case and that's where after the first word every subsequent word is capitalized such as here is a space or hours in day. Oops, I didn't assign that to anything that's why we returned an error. Coke zero Now, from a Python running standpoint, it doesn't matter which one you use. I tend to think the pothole case looks a little bit cleaner. It's a little bit easier to keep track of when you have larger programs. So that's what I would recommend. But there's nothing wrong with camel case. Occasionally in programs, and we'll get to the point where we do this as well, um, you'll notice all these variables are changing quite a bit. Any variable that you don't anticipate, anticipate changing, for example, hours in day, if we know throughout the entire operation of our program the variable is not going to change in value, the Python convention is to have that variable in all capital letters. So hours and day, I don't expect hours and day to change. That variable isn't going to be altered throughout the course of the program. So I'll have that in all capitals. It doesn't 
affect the running of your program, it's a good thing to keep in mind as we get to more complex programs, we'll continue using and practicing these sorts of skills. So that's going to conclude lesson 1.2. If you've sat through and watched Lesson 1.1 1 .1 and 1.2, uh, here's what you should be able to do. After viewing and practicing this presentation, you should be able to list and define the seven Python mathematical operators. You should be able to explain the difference between an int or an integer and a float numeric type. You should be able to describe how Python handles order of operations and how you can change that order using parentheses. You should be able to define the term syntax and also explain some of the things that would cause a syntax error. You should be able to explain the relationship between memory addresses and variables, discuss the rules for variables such as naming conventions and syntax, and explain how case sensitivity can impact these variables. If you can do those things off the top of your head, or if you can explain those things, you're right where you need to be. If any of those things seem, seem difficult, you might want to go back and look at Lesson 1.1 and 1.2 again until you're pretty comfortable with those concepts. Once you are, you'll be ready to move on to the next lesson. As always, I appreciate you watching these videos. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments, and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.